guys welcome back or to my youtube channel um i hope everybody's having a good day um apologies for being gone i got a little overwhelmed but i'm incredibly thankful i received 17 commissions um which is crazy i've never received that many uh commissions before or interest before and i'm still receiving some but i officially closed them um but i'm really really thankful that that even happened like wow that's that's never been a thing for me and i know that um a lot of artists get this when you open up commissions you usually have to fight to still get some um so a little a little humble brag i guess um really thank you guys um an extra big thank you to the critical role community um i feel like it's because of the jester drawing this this lady right here um that that even happened and i am so so thankful that DD has become a part of my life um so yeah it's incredible um so that's where i've been so i took a little break from youtube to get all that done and the stress of it and patreon um with that was becoming a bit overwhelming which i don't want it to be so commissions are currently closed and next time i will only be opening up a couple slots at a time i have also raised my prices and patrons get first dibs so if you are interested keep an eye i will announce ahead of time in case somebody does want to subscribe to my patreon to make sure they get first dibs to a commission today's video we are going to be going over the critical roles yasha portrait that i did um i'm again thankful to critical role community for all the love on this on twitter critical role actually retweeted it which is nuts crazy pants so in today's video we are going to be going over the process video of the yasha drawing um another big thank you to critical role because one the community was super sweet about it um i'm so thankful um i actually posted a picture of the yasha drawing and or a tweet of the yasha drawing and the jester drawing together on twitter and critical role retweeted it um so huge thank you to them um i got a lot of love on that and it was just incredibly kind um so thank you for that and today's video i'm actually going to be sharing with you um what references i used for the yasha drawing and how i utilize them and how um that whole shebang works uh references are really important i know that there's a i think small group in the artist community that doesn't believe in using references um i'm a big believer in not tracing but using references is key you don't know how to draw a human body <laughs> on your own but that's the thing eventually you will and that's the same thing with tracing not that i like it but it is a great tool for practice so um this was not traced but i will show you guys what references i use used which include a picture of rhonda ruzi and a wonderful model's face so hopefully um that is helpful to you on how i kind of put things together and um yeah before we get into today's video, um, I know it's been a few weeks, but last week's video, um, which the picture says, I don't know what I'm doing, and it was about it was about character design. Um, I got four, mm, one, two, three, four, five comments, and um, they're all pretty simple, and I really appreciate them. Um, so I'm going to uh, give a shout out to the top one because I liked their enthusiasm. It is from Yaheli Harari, and it says, "I love your videos, and your D and D characters are a wonder." And I like the way they wrote it and I'm really thankful because I love D&D &D and I love making my characters and I'm slowly falling in love with my characters. Um, I'm totally in love with the first one but the other two are growing on me. It's really fun. Um, so a special thank you to Yaheli Harari for making a comment. Um, a thank you to everybody else though. I'm not going to sh uh, show the comments but Wild Quill commented, Patrick commented, Patrick's been a big supporter of me for a long time. Trish Z, uh, they commented as well and they've also been supporting me for a while. And a new one, <clears throat> Akoya Moyahoy, which I, re I really love your name. Um, they said it was beautiful. So I'm really thankful for the people that can take the time to comment. Um, it really helps on YouTube. It's a hard place to grow. But on that note, guys, we made it to 700 subscribers, which is crazy to me. Um, YouTube, like I just said, really hard to grow on here. So thank you guys for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for liking and thank you for watching. You guys are awesome. Before we get into today's video, um, I just wanted to say a quick little thing. I will not be talking about Yasha at all, just in case there's anybody who hasn't watched about her. Um, I'm only on like episode 48, so I just learned a couple of things. Um, just heard some of her backstory literally about two hours ago. So um, I will not be giving any spoilers or talking about her character. 
um, just the design that I put together um, in case anybody was worried about that as I have spoken about my own characters in the past this is not what that video is so um, without further ado let's get into it so for today's tips and tricks on how I use references, um, I have five tricks and uh, the first few are gonna, I'm gonna keep it short and the rest I'm gonna kinda talk through exactly how I used references for this Yasha piece. So my very, very first tip is one that I don't actually follow and I do have a reason for that, but first let me tell you what it is. So it's create your own references. Now I, am a bigger girl so I have a harder time creating my own references with my anatomy and that's something I'm working on but moving on my hands they don't show the bones um, stuff like that so I usually have a friend um, if I really need a hand picture I have a, a good friend of mine um, take a picture of their own hand so I can get a reference from that um, actually, I actually have a handful of friends that are <laughs> A handful. <laughs> I have a handful of friends that are ready uh, when I need them to get some references, um, which I really, really appreciate them for. So creating your own references is really great because you don't have to worry about any type of copying, um, anything like that. So it's highly recommended. Um, I hope one day that I have um, the courage, but also um, the anatomy to take the references that I'm looking for. Um, but you can also get these references from um, different people that actually just like spend their days taking pictures and editing them for like tons and tons of references for artists. I don't have any on hand that I use, but do check that out online. There's a lot of great uh, creators out there that uh, make references for artists. So make your own or find some that have been specifically made for that. Do remember that um, whether or not you have to pay for those, um, that's another creator and you should be supporting them if you're using their references. Uh, whether you directly pay for them, give them a shout out, um, tag them, etc. So keep that in mind. My second one comes to that, uh, my second tip, and that is don't copy. Um, copying another person's drawing obviously is a huge no-no. That includes the pose. Keep that in mind. Even if you're going to... Um, even if you're if you're going to change the whole entire aspect of the drawing but just do the exact same pose that is still copying um so try and spice it up a bit um before we get on to more better reference tips uh the third one i want to make is um i call it oddities and this is something that i look for when i'm looking for references so you might see a picture um, whether it be of a person, uh, a place, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and if there's something that just looks obscure to you, um, even if it's beautiful, like there's been, you know, um, my sister, she likes to send me uh, Instagram baddies and stuff like that so that she wants me to draw, and sometimes there's just people with such an interesting face that I feel like if I tried to draw them it would come out wrong or as if I didn't know what I was doing. And I don't know if that makes any sense, but I like to call it oddities. If it looks a little different on um, on picture, it might transfer to paper or digitally, whatever you want to call it, um, oddly. So I call it oddities. Then again, um, please keep in mind, uh, if you draw a really cool Instagram person and they just have such a unique face and you pull it off, that's also amazing too. So I just say this in the point of I might use somebody's face kind of as a reference uh, and I just want to make sure that I know what I'm doing and it comes across that way if I can. But I mean, as an artist, you don't always have to know what you're doing. Um, so that's my third tip. My fourth and fifth tip um, kind of come together in a way and I'm going to talk about the references I used for this Yasha piece with it. So my my fourth tip is going to be lighting. If you get something that's too exposed, you're not going to see all the planes and shadows of a face, for example, or the anatomy or a body. Like if it's too like just just bright, contrasted, you're not going to get that. Um, I mean, if you're going for that look in your piece and then you're almost directly copying it, like I guess then it's okay, but I don't really like to do that. I don't recommend it. It kind of can be copying if you're doing it that way anyways. So lighting is key. 
So my fifth tip, and this one is super important, I have done this before, I'm even going to pop up um, a, little, <laughs> a little reference that I put together um, for a different piece here, and that is combine your references. So for example, before we get to the Yasha explanation, um, this is a piece of my friend's D&D character, his name is Zurater or Zuri, and he described him to me as um, a mixture of Zac Efron bod with like Henry Cavill face. So I was like, great, how am I gonna figure that out? So I actually took pictures off the internet of them and I totally made my entire reference. I merged them, I changed the lighting, I affected um, the neck and I made my own reference for what I was drawing. And I'll show you the examples here side by side. So combining references can be super helpful because not only are you not copying something directly, um, you're getting a totally new look, which is great because you want to be original if you can. You know, it's a big world out there and it's there's always gonna be something that looks like something else, but if you can be original and not just redraw a whole other person, that's, that's great. Um, so that's what I like to do is I like to combine. So moving on to the Yasha piece, when you think of Yasha, she is this big, buff, amazing woman, like just this big, amazing woman. And I didn't personally know who I could really fit into that exact look that I was going for. Um, I knew what kind of body I was looking for, but I couldn't find, you know, a good enough picture that had the body and the face in a pose that I wanted. So when I was putting together the references for Yasha, I told myself, what do I want her to be doing? Now, I know it's just a portrait, so it seems kind of silly to be thinking about that. But if you have seen Critical Role, um, I'm only on episode 49, but Yasha is constantly looking to the skies. So I wanted her with her head tilted up in a very serene face because she either looks grumpy or serene, at least how I imagine her. So that's what I was looking for, but I could not find that with a Rhonda Rosie, Rosie, Rosie picture. Um, and that is who I used for her big buff bod. So I used this reference of Rhonda Rosie and I used this picture of a face and I kind of combined them. Now I didn't make, <laughs> I didn't make a big old reference like I did for the Zuri piece, but I could have if I, if I, if I wanted to, or I felt it was necessary. So combining references is so important. And I feel like it really, really helped me with this piece. Um, as you can see it coming together, uh, I actually, if you watch the beginning of this video, I drew that first part and I'm gonna keep that in here because I want you guys to see my process. I drew that first part without any references and it shows, it shows a lot. Um, something I didn't talk about in this video and I feel like it should be mentioned is you are no less of an artist for using references. You, you don't just know how to draw these things unless you're a skilled professional who's been, you know, doing this for years. You don't know how to draw these things without a reference, or maybe you do, but you're not great at it. Now, don't trace, don't copy it, um, as I've said multiple times this video, but look up those references. Absolutely. Have like a whole, like, like just, just the, the folder of references for your drawings, you guys, because it doesn't make you any less of a creative person. It doesn't mean you can't draw. It just means your eyes need to register what you're trying to draw. Okay. Um, I know there's, I think it's actually not that big of a group of people in the world that think that references aren't okay. Um, but even the greats use references. Pretty sure Mona Lisa sat for the picture. You know what I mean? So don't worry about that. Don't trace, but use references, you guys. Um, the difference in my work between the beginning and um, the the end, or at least the the end of the sketch, is is pretty extreme. Um, and sometimes your brain just needs to register exactly what you're thinking. And uh, that's why I think references are important. And that's why I think that you should combine them because it's kind of a lot of fun too. Um, it can be frustrating, especially because it took me so long to find this head picture that I wanted. So long. References are key, you guys, and. Don't be afraid to use them. I hope this video was informative for you and I hope that you continue to use references without guilt. And if you are directly copying a pose, you guys, um, if you're like, whoa, this cosplayer's pose is sick. I'm gonna draw them as a totally different character. Still reference that cosplayer, you guys. 
um, if you copied the pose, like not copied it, sorry, not tracing or anything, but if you did her exact pose, the angle, the crop, consider tagging them, you guys. It's important. There are other creators too, you know? So uh, other than that, I'm just going to say a second huge thank you to the Critical Role community. Um, I think that maybe one day I maybe, possibly, maybe <laughs> could be a full-time artist because of wonderful people like you guys and like Critical Role community and Critical Role themselves and all my fellow D&D nerds out there um, and all of my fellow, you know, artists out there that have been really, really kind. So I'm going to leave that video here. I hope you guys enjoy the process video of Yasha. She was really fun to create and she helped me get out of my art block. So if you have any questions or videos you'd like to see, always feel free to comment and please remember to like, subscribe, and maybe share the video uh, and comment if uh, you're into it. I hope everybody has a great day. Remember to drink some water and I will see you next week. I promise. Bye guys.